This is just gonna be a short video and it's totally geared to people who are interested in or have been breeding their red-footed yellow foot tortoises. And the reason for that is I've gotten a number of questions on, on that, those specifics. And one of the things I caution people about is the temperatures to incubate at. And so I wanna use an example of why you should never incubate at really high temperatures. Now you can incubate red foot, yellow foot tortoise eggs up to 90 degrees. I'm gonna strongly suggest you don't, and here's why. As you're watching this video, you're seeing this is a tortoise who's from our 2011 brood, and the 2011s, all of them, all five clutches, I incubated at 89 to 90 degrees. I wanted to get nothing but females. <clears throat> and in red foot tortoises, and all tortoises in general, and alligators work the same way, alligators and crocodiles is just the inverse. In tortoises, basically 85 degrees is kind of the midpoint. Anything below that, say 82 or even 80 to 85, for tortoises will get you males. 86 to 90 will get you predominantly females. So if you're incubating at 85, 86 degrees, you're gonna get basically a mix of males and females. <clears throat> I incubated all the 2011s as an experiment at 89 and 90 degrees. All the ones we had that year, which I think was basically a dozen, 11 of them turned out stunningly beautiful. And a lot of them went to Florida, a couple of the holdbacks just went to uh, Jeremy Thompson, who, if you follow Facebook, is a breeder, young fellow who's a breeder down in Florida. He picked up three of our 2011s this year that I holdbacks had decided to sell. But the one you're watching is one that my wife and I call Hingy. And Hingy, even though it was incubated at a high temperature, acts very much like a male, and as you can see, is very deformed, a very deformed shell. And this is what can happen when you incubate tortoise eggs at a high temperature. It isn't always gonna happen, but it can happen. Well, I obviously can't sell Hingy. And at this point, we really don't know how long a life Hingy may have. The shell, as you're kind of looking at it, as you see, has some issues, and eventually those issues could result in, in a manner that Hingy can't eat anymore or has trouble. So far, gets around just fine, has his own pen. But this, like I said, this, this video is just a short video, and it's a cautionary tale for anybody thinking of breeding redfoots and yellowfoots. And it's why I suggest in my course, which you can find in the uh, upper corner here, at the link that has a little eye <clears throat> on redfoots and yellowfoots, the whole breeding piece, I talk about it, but I really recommend that you basically breed these guys or incubate these guys, not breed them, incubate these guys at 85 to 86 degrees. Don't really go any higher than that. Keep it right at that point. You get a mix of males and females, obviously at a young age until they get to basically six inches long. You don't have any idea whether they're males or females. You won't know until that point unless you want to do an endoscopic procedure, where you, which you can do, but makes no sense on tortoises this inexpensive. Those endoscopic procedures are generally kept for for radiated, radiated tortoises, the Burmese star tortoises, ones that are exceedingly, exceedingly rare and almost, or like the Burmese star, extinct in the wild, where it makes sense to know at a very early age. But in our case, it's not. So 85 to 86 degrees, you get perfect, flawless tortoises, as you've seen from the ones that look perfectly flawless. High temps, you can get deformities. So don't go high temps. Stick at 85 to 86 degrees. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Thanks for watching this video on these truly unique tortoises. Now, if you're interested in learning more about these wonderful animals or want to become an expert on redfoot or yellowfoot tortoises, you can, because I've created a complete care and husbandry video course that has all aspects of their diet, indoor and outdoor pens, breeding, and their health covered for you. It's over an hour's worth of information distilled from my 16 plus years of working with redfoots, and I think you'll enjoy it and find the information valuable. Check out the link at the top right or below in the description. And thanks again for your interest in these unique tortoises.